Hello, uh, today I'm going to take us through a book called Unconditional Parenting. Uh, I know it's back to front, but there we go. Unconditional Parenting by Alfie Cohen. Why would I choose a book on parenting uh, uh, at these times? You know, I, I do so many sessions every, every day or all week and so on. Not everyone I speak to has children, has young children and so on. <clears throat> why, would I, why would I pick a book on parenting? One, because it's great. But also, also, if you look at the world around us right now and how much it's changing, and you look and if you're interested in this sort of thing, I imagine you want to make a change in the world, okay? And we as adults, we've got the opportunity, of course, to make uh, lateral changes, okay? We can change how we vote, think, uh, speak up for people, all these things. Also, <laughs> we can shape and change the future, can't we? Because I have three kids upstairs and effectively, I can, I can influence how they think about the world and therefore the next 50 years through them. So long as my intention is good, is positive, is pure and so on, okay? Um, <clears throat> I work with a lot of people who are going through some sort of trauma that is carried through. To a degree, I'm not saying in totality, but to a degree some of that trauma has come from youth, uh, childhood and how they were raised and so on. From there and I look at how it plays out in people's lives in relationships in at work how they feel about themselves how much belief they have in themselves and so on and so the you know, the first the first 10 plus years of someone's life is tremendously important and the values that are shown to them how they're shown to them and so on and Alfie Cohn Alfie Cohn here sees alive and kicking <laughs> He's in the Boston area. This book was published in 2005. Um, amongst the wash of books there are on parenting. But this isn't, this is, um, shall we say this is an unconventional approach. It's unconventional insofar as, uh, using his words, we're looking at what the child needs, what we can do to achieve it. We're not looking at what the child necessarily wants and how to achieve it, because that's, that's, that's not the most important thing. What the child needs and how to achieve that. <coughs> By the way, forgive that sound. The, uh, we just had a lot of rain here. I'm in the basement here and that's the sound of a sump pump. It's not someone flushing the toilet right next to me. I thought I should just throw that in. So, the essence of the book is it's taking parenting from a state of doing to the child into one where we're doing with the child, working with the child. He's the first person to say, and I'll be the second person to say, parenting is difficult, all right? It's challenging, it's hard, it's wonderful, it's exhausting. I think Anna upstairs, she'd agree with me with all of that. Uh, parenting is wonderful, it's very tiring too. So I'm not pretending that anything I'm gonna say in the next few minutes is easy, is simple. I don't find it easy and simple myself. Um, all the things he suggests in the book, I'm not quite there yet, completely honestly. However, it's taking, it's taking a, a way of uh, raising children from focusing on obedience to really who they are, what they need, and having, having an ongoing relationship with that, rather than valuing making the child do what we want them to do. Uh, uh, the, he starts the book off with a story, he was flying somewhere, and someone someone he was sitting near went up to a parent and said what a good what a good boy you have what a good boy you have because the boy was quiet he was the boy was quiet for the duration of flight and therefore the person said what a good boy now here's the funny thing here's the funny thing uh, that is valued also <laughs> the people that have made the real uh, uh, brave changes in the world, they've been the rebels, haven't they? They've been the rebels, they've been the people that went against things. I do believe it's enormously important for our kids to not do what we ask them to do. <laughs> the truth is to find a balance. The truth is to find a balance, isn't it? Because we want the kids to be who they are. Um, all, that, all, that we, all that is getting dismantled in the world at the moment is a function of control, isn't it? It's a function of control. No one wants control. No one likes control. It's not, it's, uh, it's not, it's not true and right, and we, we know that in our, in our hearts. Anyway, let me, take you through, let me take you through the first two chapters. I'm going to go reasonably quickly because it kind of covers the issue. 
and I think it's pretty it's pretty clear what the issue is. Um, the the solutions and suggestions are a little bit more interesting. So. Alfie Cohn, he's from the conservat um, constructionist, forgive me, he's from a constructivist, uh, constructionist background. He's not into behaviorism. If you're into behaviorism in that world, this book is just not going to be for you. Um, so, he's talking about conditional, conditional parenting versus unconditional parenting. Now, you might say, well, I love my kids unconditionally. Everyone would say that, wouldn't they? But love is an interesting word, isn't it? It's got a lot, a lot wrapped up in it, especially, especially especially with our loved ones, especially with our loved ones. You take, a, you, take a, you take a tired or stressed parent, they want their kid to just do something or stop doing something, you know? And that's not, that's not unconditional, isn't it? Unconditional would be accepting the child as the person, who they are and what they're doing in a given moment. And so he's talking about conditional, conditional uh, child raising as focusing on what the child is doing. Unconditional raising is focusing on what the child, who the child is, who they are. Conditional parenting is focusing on the reward punishment. If you do something I want you to do, I, I'm happy. If you don't do something I want you to do, I will punish you. Right? Reward punishment. And that's the behaviorist approach there, the conditional behaviorist approach from Skinner, if you're familiar with that at all. And um, what we've got going on there, or the issues he has with it, is it focuses on the external, on the behavior. It's transactional. You do this, I like it. You don't do this, I don't like it. Um, it also creates a false sense of self. We'll get more into that in a minute. The second chapter is about giving and withholding love. Uh, you may have, um, as a child, you may have gotten put in time out or, or any of these things. <clears throat> but how a parent expresses their love is a reward or it is a punishment, isn't it? Isn't it? Um, so, something I have a bit of a tough time in this book is he is against saying, good job. The child does something well. He's against saying, good job. Now, I'm, that's a work in progress for me, quite honestly. Quite honestly. Um, uh, I, we're, we're schooling the kids ourselves at the moment just because of how things are. And uh, I was proud of one of them the other day. I was like, good job, good job. There's a middle ground with all of this. What he's really saying is, what he's really saying is, <clears throat> is looking to avoid a child, a human being, a person, there it goes again, a child, a human being, a person, getting addicted to praise because if the praise is not there, what do they do? What's the motivation? But also, a little more importantly, there's a roller coaster of self-esteem. If they get praise, their self-esteem is high. If they don't, then, then, it, then it sinks. We don't want that to happen either. Um, the next chapter is about excessive control. And the real point I'm going to make here, and why I'm sharing this with grown adults, as it were, excessive control tends to lead, he says, leads to either excessive compliance or excessive defiance. So, kind of two, two, two polarities of the same thing there, being excessively defiant or excessively compliant. I've actually been both of those. <laughs> for the very most part, for the most part, excessively compliant when I was young, because I was raised with a lot of control, I was raised with a lot of, I was raised with things like hit, you know, hitting and things like that, which I'm sure you were. Um, and the thing about excessive control is as soon as it is not there, off, Goes the, uh, the the all the all the measures of control are gone. The child is not being controlled. There's no there's no trust or or, or connected relationship there. Um, he covers he covers the notion of punishment itself and again withdrawal of love. So you put a child in time out, even though the child may not have had coping skills because they're a child. Put a child in time out, that's where they develop a sense of abandonment. Obviously not a good thing. Obviously not a good thing. The next chapter is an interesting one. It's about, um, about parents who push their children to succeed. What I haven't said yet is uh, Alfie Cohn is very, very funny. The whole way through this book, very, very funny. Like, laugh out loud, funny. And he talks about the type of parents that push their children to get, that, that prepare their children for Harvard. And he says he calls that Preparation H, which I, I, found, I found that funny. Anyway, I found that funny. But um, never mind Harvard in and of itself, it's about, it's about, it's about the, 
what's going on there is the parents are projecting their own um, their own self onto the success of the child and kind of living vicariously through the child. And so the child uh, can develop things like fear of failure, self handicapping, self sabotage. Obviously, obviously, yes, obviously not good. Next chapter is about what is holding us back. What's holding the parents back? What, what's making us do this if, we, if we're doing that? Other than being very tired. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, so the first point he makes is to look at how we see, we the adult, we the parents see children. Do we see them as rascals? Do we see them as angels? Or do we see, or do we basically see ourselves and how we were raised? There's a lot of that, of course, goes on. We raise our children as we were raised. My father was, my father's father, my grandfather, didn't know him very well. Not, uh, not the most pleasant of people, as I, as I understand. And that's what my father was raised with. And uh, he raised myself and my brother, certainly in the first 20 years with that. Both of us have um, turned away from that style of parenting. It doesn't feel right to us, it doesn't feel right to us. My brother's not into the same sort of things I am, but I see he raised his children with great love and uh, 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 friendship as well. Um, we'll get onto that more in a minute. The, the second thing that holds us back is competition, comparison. Um, he does stress later on in the book that the more that we can help our kids to work with each other, find mutual goals, mutual cooperation, uh, the, better, the better they function in the, in the medium longer term. Then there's expectations, that pretty much speaks for, speaks for itself. Um, and the last part of this chapter is on parental fears. I found, I found that really interesting. Uh, the thing that really stuck out for me is, uh, other than our own fear of, our own parental fear of failure, there's um, fear of being in public, okay? Um, and this, this, this brought up some things for me because I don't like, uh, I don't like flying with the kids, I really don't. I'm happy to fly with them. But uh, it brings up stuff for me about bothering other people, and that's what I—that's what I don't like as a human being. My stuff, my stuff. What he actually says about that is, you know what? Ignore other people. If, if one of them, two of them, having a tantrum, let them have a tantrum. Let them have a tantrum. That's going to be a work in progress for me. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet, but um, it would be worse in the long run to to behave adversely to our child because we are worried about that lady or that guy over there, then it would be to ignore them. I'm not saying let kids run wild, and he's not either. He's not either. Right. Um, now, the chapter that I wanted to, to actually list some things out of, this chapter is called uh, The Principles of Unconditional Parenting. Because I think it's I think it's reasonably clear, I think it's reasonably clear what the issues of growing of of, of raising a child with uh, excessive control are, how that affects uh, in longer term. Uh, things I even haven't said, like uh, there'll be the, there'll be the parent that says, I don't know what happened to our Billy. Say he always did what he told when he was growing up, and he, now he's a teenager and uh, and uh, we, uh, and. And he's just out of control. And the point he makes is that the point he makes in here is yes, he did what he was told all the way growing up. Now he's with a new peer group, and he's doing what they tell him. Hmm? Um, so being being over influenced. So the principles of unconditional parenting, as it were, this middle ground, this middle ground between authoritarian and authoritative uh, parenting. So. Um, the first one, the first one is to is to be reflective. So instead of going to our automatic response or automatic what we would do, be reflective. Stop. Pause. The second one is reconsider the requests that are being made by the child. Kind of the same point. Same point. The third is look at the long term goals. I like this one. I like this one because it makes me think about well, who is this? Who is the person that? Who is the person that this child is growing up to be, or how can I help them with that? Or does this matter right now? Is this going to help that? Is me doing what I was going to do going to help that or hinder it? Uh, the fourth one is to put the relationship first. Okay, uh, I, I had one of one of the kids emptied a barrel full of barrel, a, a bucket of these tiny tiny beads onto the floor in our bedroom the other day, and I oh dear had a tough time with that. But there came a point like, does, 
does this need to be resolved right now? Do I need to push this as much as I was going to push this right now? Um, the next one is to change how you see, not how you act. Change how you see, not how you act, okay? Because we're not talking about being like overly permissive, uh, overly an excessive hippie permissive here. We're not talking about that. Um, <clears throat> but instead, instead, of seeing, instead of seeing the child as deliberately, deliberately doing something to make a mess or upset something or upset someone, to see what's actually going on there in what well, might have just been expressiveness, right? Right? Or, or, or just being, being free. But, but also not to, not to bring some kind of barrier, barrier, not, that's not the word, some kind of boundary, uh, parameter to that, discipline to that. So both is important. Um, next one, of course, be respectful. Show respect. This is a this is an adult in the in the making. There's an expression, isn't there? Have children raise adults. And I'm not talking about. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not suggesting that we talk to our kids like they're adults. That's ridiculous, isn't it? You ever hear that? You ever hear parents doing that? Talking to their uh, talking to their kids. Talking to a five year old like. Now think about the choices you're making. So what does a five year old do with that? But to show them respect, okay? To listen to them. Listen while they're talking. Consider their point of view. They're a person. How would we how would we show respect to an adult? You know, they're a child, but how would we show we would show respect to an adult, so we would show respect to them. And that's teaching them to show respect also, isn't it? And the next one is to be authentic. I think uh, I can totally remember when I was young, you could probably do as well, when when our parents were saying something and we knew we didn't believe them. We just knew we didn't believe what they were saying. Um, next one is to keep their age in mind. You know, one, uh, our youngest, Alexander, he's four. He has had so many lifetimes on this planet, like so many. <laughs> and of course, he's the youngest of three, so he's watching what they do. He develops very quickly. He develops very quickly. And we even sometimes forget he's only four. He's got, so he's got, he's got characteristics of of someone, you know, several years older. He's only four, and. Uh, you know, what's, what is our expectation of a human being that is four years old? They're not six years old, they're not ten years old. Um, the next one is to talk less and ask more. Because if we're just talking, then we only know what we know. I think this applies to every situation, doesn't it? In the work, a spouse, um, anything else that you do, uh, any kind of creative partnership or arrangement, the more we talk, the less really we know about what's going on with the other person. So we talk less and we ask more, we ask more. Um, I like this next one. Attribute, attribute the best motive given the facts, okay? Slightly covered in an earlier point here. But, uh, so let's go to, let's go to, let's go to Alexander emptying out the bucket of beads the other day. What I could have done is think, oh, just want, is look and think, oh, he wanted to play with beads. And, He'll clear up after himself. I could have gone there. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't, but I could have gone there. Now let me tell you what happened. After going backwards and forwards with the with the please clear up and, and then and then yeah, I'm gonna own it. I did go to uh, um, if you don't clear up it's gonna take us longer to leave later on. I went there, <clears throat> tried to help him clear up, that didn't work. He ended up going downstairs, and I don't know if it was because he talked to he talked to Anna or he just came up with this by himself. But he came up with a creative way to clean up all of these beads. He came up with one of these transformer toys that's got one of these pickup, and he cleaned up. My approach with the control wasn't working. wasn't working. But I could have gone into that situation with with well, he's just having fun here, and he knows what he's doing, and and so on. Um, the next one, nearly there with this list by the way, it's a lot of them. The next one is to watch for the unnecessary no's. Not no's, but, 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 but the no's. Um, under the umbrella of not always being reactive, not always, always saying no. Um, looking at what needs to be said, how it needs to be addressed in the moment. Um, the last two, um, 
kind of obvious now you think about it in this context don't be rigid don't be too rigid and don't be in a hurry I've got to learn that last one don't be in a hurry all the time don't be in a hurry because uh, I think a lot about time and uh, time is how we live and time is how we live and and very important not to rush our kids not once has it ever helped <laughs> to not once has it ever helped to rush them it's never made anything better it made any better all right Going on, going on to a few other things in the book, he's talking about loving without strings attached. And the most biggest point he's making at, in the biggest point he's making there is to look at criticism in terms of what well, it's got to maybe happen sometimes because criticism can be constructive. Of course it can, and we live in a world that values that that places its own value on who we are and what we do. That's just the world, and so criticism is a part of it but he's talking about he's talking about um, limiting moderating the number of criticisms you make moderating the scope of criticism and of course moderating the intensity the intensity of it and for a lot of us who were raised with criticism that's not the easiest thing to do but it's certainly possible it's certainly possible um, an interesting chapter is the one on choices so he says that um, he starts out by making a point that children learn to make decisions by making decisions. They don't learn to make decisions by following them. Uh, it's, it's obvious when you think about it, but not, as a, not always as a parent. You probably, probably agree with me. Probably agree with me. Um, so, so, so suggestions and principles he puts forward here are about looking for solutions together, whether that's you and the child or whether it's a couple of kids together. He's talking about explaining, the importance of explaining. I'm a big fan of that myself, um, apart from anything else. I don't always know what else to do. Don't do what I don't know what else to do. He's talking about setting the example, being a role model. Uh, obvious when you think about it, it's talked about a lot, but we, you know, to remember as, as parents, we're always being watched. We're always being watched by our children, what we do, how we act, what we don't do, and so on. And of course, to be honest and kind. The, the last thing I'd really to say about the book itself, to cover the material, but just before I take a broader perspective on this, is, uh, for, forgive me, I'm using the word too much, but the child's perspective, the child's own perspective. Uh, because when you're raising a child, whether it's your own child and, or, or, or teaching them or whatever, you are really fortifying and... influencing morals and moral development. So he's talking about the importance of discussing with them, um, uh, explaining with them. He's talking about the importance of helping the child to see from another person's perspective. Because the thing about punishment and reward and all of that is it's, that is all about the person doing it. It's all about the person doing it. If a child, what he's saying is, if a child can be encouraged to consider and contemplate the consequences on someone else or their actions on someone else, rather than the person that's, <laughs> rather than the person that's giving the reward or punishment, then a lot more light bulbs go off and a lot more exploration happens. Punishment, he says, uh, punishment kills exploration and freedom and all these other things. Um, what else to say? When I look at the world at the moment and all the things that are being brought up, resisted, complained about, and all this, I look at when I look at the when I look at the root of it, it's control and it's force, excessive power, yes, other things like competition and so on. That's what that's what the root of it is. And While I think it would be unfair to suggest someone read this book if they're not a parent, the purpose of it is we are raising our, the child that we are. We are still raising that child, or us, we. And when to look at the trajectory of a child, for us to look at the trajectory of a child helps us understand who we are and how we got to where we are. Every day, 
every day I'll have a conversation with someone about, or someone will ask me about why they're still repeating a pattern, why they're still stuck in a situation. It had to happen somewhere. It had to happen when it, 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 there had to be a, a time, an occasion, a situation where they, they weren't listened to, they weren't heard, they weren't treated with respect. And it had to happen somewhere, didn't it? It had to happen somewhere. And so, and so parenting, is, parenting is not easy. It's not easy. I'm gonna have a day with them today. I'm sure I'll get it right. I'm sure I'll get it wrong. I'm sure both will happen. It's not easy. But I really do have in mind that the greatest contribution I'm going to make to the planet, and I do want to make a great contribution to the planet, but the greatest contribution I'm going to make to the planet is through these three small humans upstairs. And all things like this, it's going to be the smaller part of it. I know that. They're, they're, going, to be, they're going to be the greatest and longest contribution I can make to this planet and to humanity. And whether it's whether if you're interested, because he's 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 wonderful. He's really funny. Um, watch his watch some of his videos. Listen to his audio books. There's other books he's written. There's other books he's written. Um, it, it doesn't just have to be about your own children. It might be about someone else's children and the influence you can have on them. Beneficial, positive, loving um, influence you can have on them. So, it's I think quite. Uh, quite enough about that. Unconditional Parenting by Alfie Cohn. Um, very, uh, very enjoyable. Um, I haven't even said he, uh, forgive me, I haven't even said. Alfie Cohn works in the field. He's a scholar, he's an independent scholar, apart from uh, a writer and author and, and speaker and so on. His areas are education, parenting and behavior. Um, yeah. So, Anyway, thank you for listening. I hope there's been something of interest in that and uh, wishing you a, a fantastic day.